So with this video, what I'm hoping to achieve is to create a file reader that will connect to this file that I'm trying to load, um, which is a comma-separated value file that has names of students in one column, their house in the second column, and then their house point totals in the third column. And what I want to do is to be able to sort that um, into descending order uh, to have the highest scoring student displayed at the top. Um, so what I'll have to do first of all is um, open a connection to the file in read only mode um, and I'll just put the name of the file going to access as file. I want to use the open command and then inside the um, first comment uh, string here we've got to provide the name of the file that we want to open so I've called that house point totals and it's a CSV file so house point totals dot CSV and the second parameter we provide here is the mode we want to open it in so I put R that will allow me to open it in read mode and hopefully um, we'll go on to the write mode later what we have to do next is read in all the data from the file and I like to just use a variable called raw data to store this. It actually stores an array of um, every line which is read in until it meets the end of file character. So the file we want to read is called file and we instruct it using the read lines command which will read in all the data. And after we've read in the data, really, we're finished with the file for now. So we can close the file by saying file.close. And what I like to do is test um, output to make sure that the file has been read successfully. So I'll just do a quick print. And I'll literally print out the raw data that I've received and execute that. Um, so I haven't saved it yet, and it's really important for simplicity, it's not actually necessary that um, you have it saved into the same folder that your um, file is saved in. So I'll just save it in there for simplicity. And as you can see, after it executes, we can see an array printed. Um, it's printing out each of the strings. We can see this control character being displayed as part of them. They're all separated by um, commas internally in the string there. So that's good. That's what I was expecting and hoping. So we can see that the, the file has been open, opened and read successfully. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to do is create arrays to store uh, the items that's been read in. So if we look in the the file we're reading in, we've got names, we've got houses, and we've got house points. Now, it's important to note just now, because I often forget myself, that these um, need to be treated as strings, and this needs to be treated as an integer. Now, it can cause problems later whether you change it or whether you don't change it, so um, bear that in mind. Now, what we have to do is repeat for all of the items and raw data, and we want to take one string at a time. So we can use for i and range uh, zero to the length of names. And really any of the array types would be fine to use at this point. Um, want to take one row and split it uh, on delimiter comma is what we're going to use. Um, so just so we can see how this, this works, um, we need to get one string at a time from the raw data. So 
I use another variable called split data and I then take the raw data array at the current index, which would be i, and I use the split command function um, to split the individual string based on where the commas appear. So just so you can visualize what that actually does, if I sprint, print split data, we should hopefully see um, the information uh, appearing in the data. Now I've actually made a mistake here. I've put in the length of the names array. That should actually be the raw data array rather than the length of names because obviously that's empty right now. We haven't actually put anything in it. And I've removed the length function. So zero to the length will run and it will display the first split data string. Now you can see it's now been split up uh, into an array with index 0, 1 and 2 and then this um, little character is the, the new line character which is going to cause us a little bit of extra work in a second. Um, so that was just to test that it was working correctly and thankfully I did that before I moved on and did too much more because it wasn't working correctly. Um, another test that we can do is just to see how we can manipulate split data. Now that's actually an array. So for example if I get split data 1 printed, I'd be expecting it to print um, the house names, which it does. Now, rather than print those out, we can store them directly into our arrays by using the dot append method um, that's part of the functionality for our in Python. Similarly with names, the append split data and that will be zero. Don't think the order is important, but it will just look odd. Now, house points, if you remember, we were looking at that and we we're talking about how it's actually an integer. Um, and what we can do is convert that to an integer here. Now, we possibly will get an error here. And when it runs, it is because the um, house points uh, has a control character in there. So what, what I'll do is after the loop, obviously I don't have a print to test this at the minute. If I print the house points totals, um, we should see that they're coming in and it's actually worked okay. And what I often tell my students is to use the strip method, which uh, removes any uh, non-printable ASCII characters from them. So it's good to see that it worked, but it's just, I think it's a good habit to get them into. And I might have a problem with brackets with this one. Change it from there. Just test that this works correctly. Yeah, I've got a bracket missing here, I think. So yeah, it's printing fine there. Um, usually before doing that int part, it would actually store it as a string. So we can just test it all working and we've got houses and print names. So we can see they're all stored. So they're all in the same order um, as they were in the CSV file. So what we can do now is uh, sort data into a descending order the bubble sort. Um, so I like to use the variables outer and which starts from the first index <clears throat> to the length of and I'm just going to use house points because that's what I'm sorting on. It shouldn't matter. Uh, minus one. And then I like to have another variable called inner in the same range, um, house points minus one. And what we have to do 
is a test that the current house points that we're looking at, that position in there, sorry, not index, to see if that's less than the house points uh, in our plus one. And if that's the case, then we need to carry out a swap. Now, swaps with these three arrays is going to be pretty messy. If we had several arrays, it would be even more messy. So doing this um, with a record structure and arrays actually simplifies a lot of things. So if we set temp equal to the house points at inner, set the house points at inner equal to the house points at inner plus one, and then the house points at inner plus one, equal to temp. And what we can do just to check that this is working is to print the unsorted list um, plus the house point to the. So we'll do that at the beginning and then to test it works if we print the sorted list after. Uh, list can be left a string on line 31. There should be commas. So you can see um, first line is printing the CSV file the same way it was when it opened up at the beginning and you can see in the second instance it's printed it out um, sorted. So just comment out those because they're no longer necessary. Now what some people will then forget to do is swap the other arrays around. So I just copy this a couple of times and change it to the other arrays. Otherwise we would just be reassigning the house point to someone else entirely and it wouldn't actually be sorting it correctly on all of the different columns that we have. So this is why it's better practice to use the array of records because we'd only have to use one of those. Um, so we could now, and I would get the students to display it in a table often, but I'll, I'll just print this directly um, to a new file. So the the file creation is, is really, really similar to, to what's going on above there. So what I want to do is uh, open file for write. And again, just give it a file name. Um, use the open command. Now the good thing about the write file command is it creates a file for you. So I'll just call, and call this sorted file.csv and instead of R I want to open it for W to write. Now I'll just show you that there's no file there currently um, called sorted file but when I execute this code the command that we've executed there creates a new file and then when I open that it's obviously completely blank um, because I've not told it to write anything yet. Write is done the same way as we do a read almost. Um, we just have uh, the comments you want to print out so just some random info for now and I should also remember to close the file when I'm finished with it too. So this will run, execute, it doesn't look as if it does anything, but when we check the sorted file out, you can see that we've got one um, item there. Uh, now, we could just do file.write the arrays, but what we, what they won't print out is the, um, the commas that we need them to have. So if we just test that works, let's do house points and see if this actually works. Yeah, so it doesn't actually even allow you to try and write out the lists anyway. So instead of having the file.write, what we're going to have to do is um, we're 
repeat for each item in the list. And I can move this up the screen a bit. Um, so for i in range 0 to the length of the names list, and we want to file.write, and then we'll build this up piece by piece just so we can see how it works. So the names was the first column, and if I print out names at i and test it, so that executed OK, and we can see that it just throws these all into the one row, which is not going to be useful um, if we have to read it back in at any point. Um, so what we could do is add some text onto the end with the backslash n character to force it to print a new line each time. And again, if we check that out, you can see that it's starting to look a bit more like we wanted it to. So that's the new line character part working. We then had the houses, again at index, and similarly we had the house points also at index i followed by the new line character. Now this is probably going to give us an error, this one here. Um, when it tries to write out the house points, and that is because it's actually an integer that's stored in that array. So we need to do the opposite, really, of what we did when we read it in in the first place. So the options for that were don't convert it to an integer here, but have to do the comparison with an integer in the bubble sort, or any sort, or just convert it back, just in case that's a type of error that you find yourself getting. Um, so we run it, executes fine, and it's not quite complete yet because now it's just printing all of the information on one line rather in a CSV um, format. So what we've got to go back and do is add those in. So if we have a comma separating those two variables and another comma separating those two variables, and we don't need one at the end because that's the last item, Run that again, and that will be because I have missed this here. Just got to make sure the formatting's correct. No syntax error, so it's run, fine. Open the file, and you can see now that it's put all of the um, students back into a different CSV file from the original, and it's sorted them into the correct order. And just so we can see that it works with others, if we now go and add in um, other students and give them a lot higher numbers and make sure we save it again. Run a program and what I'd be expecting is to execute fine and then this sorted file is going to have been changed, hopefully, and the new students that I just added to the other file have been uh, read in from the first part, sorted, and then written again. Uh, so it's not overly tricky. There's just a lot of parts to it. And really what we can do now with the students is, is get them manipulating the data whilst it's stored in the, the program. I would get them doing counter currencies. I would have them doing linear search tasks and just lots of little basic parts that really build up their skills. Having a, a menu option displayed to them that allow them to choose from different options to execute the different functionality based on that. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And I will try and get another video working that shows how to do the same idea using uh, records and possibly 2D arrays as well.